Fish farming supports 4.2 million smallholder farmers in Uganda. From fish exports, the country earns about $116 million a year. Fish is an important commodity that Uganda is exploring on how to advance in its development agenda, hence the introduction of cage fish farming to its fishing community. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. Now, this one accommodates uh, 2,800 fish and it can yield uh, around 1.2 to 1.3 uh, tons of fish. Cage fish farming is a process whereby a cage is placed in a lake to enable the feeding and growth of the fish in a controlled area. In Uganda, cage fish farming was introduced a few years ago by the government of Uganda through its fisheries body, the National Fisheries Resources Research Institute, NAFIRI. This activity was then rolled out to the farmers around Uganda's lakes such as Lake Victoria, Choga and others. This was used to find measures of boosting the dwindling fish stocks in Ugandan waters. Uh, a cage is a, a, a unit which we, uh, we, we have different units and different sizes. We are demonstrating the cage of 2.5 by 2.5 which we stock with 2,800 fish. And the fish we grow them for about six to seven months. Now, the products we're having, these are the fish of seven months, okay? And from here, what exactly we're showing is that a farmer who is doing a, a cage fish farming, you can sell your products when they are fresh, okay? So, this side, we are having a, a, a fish which we are preparing ready for consumption. Here, the, uh, the, the, the chances or the, 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 the best things a farmer could get is that you can have your fish and sell them at any time you want. Okay? So, uh, we are adding value on what we are producing, but still, this, the value of this one compared to the fish that comes from the wild is that they are always fresh. In cage farming, a farmer looks at stocking between 1,000 to 3,000 pieces of fish in one cage. Because of this condition, particular types of fish species are preferred to be kept over others. Some of the species recommended for cage fish farming in Uganda include the Nile tilapia, the Miracup, and the North African catfish. Actually, now currently we have two uh, different species, which is tilapia and catfish and in these culture systems we are trying to look at uh, a fish that you will put to the market and people will buy but you can grow catfish and tilapia there are other species uh, like the miracap we have a we have ever tested it in our farm and it can grow well in the in the in the in the cage but now reason being that people are not well conversant with it we have to advise our farmers to have the fish in their farms which can easily be accepted by the market. And that is the tilapia because it is widely known. Uh, the Nile patch, actually the, uh, the experiments are still going on, but Nile patch is a fish which, you cannot, uh, which we are trying to, to, to work on its food. Because it normally eats fresh fish it's feral fish. So if you put it in your, in your system, or if you put it in your cages, it, needs, it means you need to have also other fish to feed that fish. So uh, we are still doing research on how to do culture of narrow patch. Then we have this Okene, okay. it's also a fish species. Then we have this fish from West Nile. Uh, it's called Angara, it's very beautiful looking outside, as you can see. Uh, it's only found in Lake Albert. 
Yes. You cannot refine it in the Albert. And then this one. You ne you only find this fish called Onangna in that place where the lake, river Nile meets the lake Albert. So it's prepared and it's ready to eat. It cannot grow beyond this size. It's a small sardine and it only grows to this level and it's very if maybe if we could test it. It's different from tilapia, it's different from any fish that you have ever eaten before because it has uh, a big meat, anyone who wants to test. <laughs> and you try, even the bones are edible, they are very soft. No one thinks it is as delicious as it looks. It really tastes good. And we have other fish products like tilapia, like powder from fish, sausages from fish, a variety of products. Cages for fish farming are made from either a hard plastic mesh or wire webbing. Flexible cages are made by building a frame then covering it with a netting made from nylon or a similar material. The type of frame used depends upon where it will be placed. Flexible cages are only suitable for still waters where there is little threat from predators such as turtles and large carnivorous fish. This is now the setup of a cage, but when it is in water, it is look, it's going to look different. Uh, so here we are supporting it, but the cage starts, uh, starts where the jerrycan is in. Here we are supporting it for demonstration purposes. Uh, this is a 2.5 by 2.5 by 2.5 depth, okay? And these are the sinkers which helps to stretch the, the cage when it is in water. And uh, this one, when we are setting it in water, we have to set what we call grid lines, grid lines. So uh, you find a grid can hold about 25 of this size. But this is uh, the smallest unit. 2.5. The cages should not go below 2.5 meter, 2.5 meters size. It should be at least 2.5, then 5 meters, and there are those ones which are circular. Now, this one accommodates uh, 2,800 fish, and it can yield uh, around 1.3, 1.2 to 1.3 uh, tons of fish. Okay, that is tilapia. If you are putting uh, catfish, then the density reduces. We put at least 2,000 pieces only in this one, which will raise in a period of six to eight months, which will raise 1.5 tons of the catfish. Okay? Uh, the materials that we use are also different. This is a knotless nylon material. But there are those ones which are knotted. So we realize that these knotless ones, when you put them in water, they don't normally lose the shape of the meshes. So this is what we normally encourage our farmers to do. And being nylon, it stays longer in water compared to the other materials. So uh, this one uh, is much better. It can, it can stay in water for about seven years constant. You put the fish, you harvest, when you harvest, you dry it a bit, you can put it the same day and stock with other fish. That is the best thing with this one. Now this pond is uh, uh, 15 meters by, by 4. And this one we stock around 1,000 fish. Now a person have a question saying that, now this one looks big, but this one is small. The, 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 the science in this is that this one is a semi-natural environment which a man, us, we have just tried to put to, because we realize that fish grows in water. But for this case, it is in the natural environment where parameters are uh, kept constant. For example, which parameters? Oxygen, temperature, uh, pH, and you find the, uh, uh, in the lake they don't normally get distorted. But here, that's why you are seeing us splashing water all the time and we keep changing. But there, it is natural.
packaged fish's nutrition comes from fish food. Commercial fish feed contains the balance of proteins, amino acids, vitamins, and minerals the fish need to grow and stay healthy. In this tank here, we have what we call African catfish fingerlings. These are the fingerlings we supply to the farmers. They stock them in their production systems, cages or ponds, and rear them for over six to eight months, depending on the target market size, so that they can sell them and get some money from this enterprise. On this other side, we have Nile tilapia fingerlings. These ones still, we sell them to farmers. They culture them in cages, in ponds, and other production systems. They get money out of them, and then they help themselves improve on their livelihoods. Yes, when we are culturing these animals, I have this tin. It's having some small organisms. I don't know whether I can see them. These ones, when these animals have just been hatched from the hatchery, we feed them on what we call, this is atemia. This is hatched atemia. It, it is present in form of cysts, which we desist, and also we can go ahead and hatch them. These animals, the African catfish, after breeding, they hatch when they are very small and their digestive system is very poorly developed. So they cannot start depending on these exogenous feeds reproduced in the factory. So what we do, we give them these live animals so that we induce their nature of hunting for these animals. In the process of hunting for the food we have provided for them, these animals again contain enzymes which again help these animals to digest them. So we call them exogenous enzymes in that these animals, when this fish ingests them, they use the animal's enzymes to digest the food when it is in the intestines and after digestion they are readily absorbed within the system and as the digestive system develops then we switch and start giving them powdered feeds. These powdered feeds, if you give them to these young fish when they haven't developed that complex digestive system, you're going to have a lot of mortalities in your hatchery. So in a way to control that, you start with live feed. After five days, five to seven days, then we expect the digestive system to have developed, then you start giving them this powder. And this powder has a high protein content, and this one contains over 45% crude protein. In that, you realize that when these fish are still very young, they need a lot of protein so that they can put on weight and grow. Made of a lot of ingredients depending on the formula we are using, which include fish meal, mukene. We also use soya bean cake. We use premix. Uh, we use uh, sunflower and so many other ingredients depending on the formula we have designed that can perform better depending on the region we are targeting. So then as the fish grow, we have fish pellets, feed pellets. These pellets have varying sizes from one millimeter, two millimeter, three millimeter, four millimeter, five millimeter. This difference in pellet size gives us an insight in that when the fish are still young, you realize that we start with live food, we go on to powder, we are looking at the gap, the mouth size of these fish. Give them something they can easily swallow without struggling. So that's why we go on adjusting the pellet sizes. As the fish grows, the mouth size increases, we go on adjusting on the pellet sizes until we reach these bigger pellet sizes which are for what we can call the adult fish. They can easily swallow it and it is composed of almost all the nutrients the fish needs so that it can be nourished and it grows as expected within the different culture systems. When intending to start up a cage fish farming project on Ugandan lakes, there are some procedures one needs to take before acquiring the necessary operating permit as Philip Rezaula expounds on this procedure. Very many farmers have got misconceptions about cage culture and we realize a lot of farmers visit our institution, those who have a chance of accessing us, telling us false information about cage fish farming. Some of them don't know the procedure they have to follow in order to attain that permission to go on the lake and start practicing cage culture. First of all, as a farmer out there, you have to know what you should go through in order to do successfully what we call cage fish farming. It starts with you. You get an idea. Yes, I have a dream of doing cage fish farming. And maybe within a year, I'm dreaming to produce 40 tons or 10 tons, depending on what you can afford. So after knowing that, you still have an idea of where on the lake it could be easier for you to do it from. So that's where we advise you 
to first visit your local fisheries officers, basically the district fisheries officer. Consult him. I have this idea. I want to do cage fish farming. What should I do? And this procedure is helping us to ensure that we produce fish in cages without causing other interferences, without affecting the water quality, without affecting the biodiversity which exists in these systems. So this fisheries officer will send you to technical fisheries research institutions of which we have National Fisheries Resources Research Institute, the leading institution that is responsible for conducting what we call a capability and suitability assessment of the site you have in mind. You want to do cage culture from there, but not everywhere on the lake you can do from cage fish farming. So as a farmer, you come to National Fisheries Resources Research Institute, we conduct an, we conduct an assessment to see whether the site is suitable. If it is suitable, we write a report with recommendations and how you're going to go about the whole process from acquisition of the permit to stocking to feeding harvesting record keeping and then you go to the market and you sell we advise you from that point of view depending on site characteristics we have identified when we are generating the baseline so after that moment you take this report to the ministry of agriculture animal industry and fisheries this ministry under its Department of Aquaculture, they look at the report, look at the recommendations which are there, and then they issue you with what we call a temporary working permit. However, we look at different scales of production. There are some farmers who are looking at way too big investments. For example, someone is looking at more than 50 tons per year. That's the production someone is looking at. They are basically investors. These ones have to do what we call an environmental and social impact assessment. In that, they have to look how will your project benefit the economy? How will the project interfere with the social economics of the area? So you get what you call an environmental impact statement. That is the report from the assessment. You take it to NEMA and NEMA approves it. The moment it approves it, it again writes to the Ministry of Agriculture so that they can go ahead and issue you with a working permit. First of all, it is a temporary working permit. After getting this permit, you again apply for what we call a water use permit from the Directorate of Water Resource Management because they are also stakeholders who are responsible for conserving and managing water quality within natural water bodies. After attaining all these documents, then you come down to the ground. You first of all plan for your farm. You have what you call a farm layout. My farm is going to look like this. I'm going to use these kinds of cages, which probably could be circular or rectangular, depending on your, what you want and what the environment can tolerate. Within that suitability report we issue you, we also advise you on issues of stocking density. Many farmers, th they, they, they inform them wrongly. Someone gets a cage, puts in a lot of fish than what the system can accommodate. He realizes that after three months, you're feeding the fish with the best feed you think it is, but they are not growing because you overstocked the system and it reached its maximum biomass it can hold. So after attaining the temporary working permit, yes, you have come on ground, you have set up the system, and then you're operating. After operating, my Ministry of Agriculture, through its Directorate of Aquaculture, they have to come after one year. They look at what you're doing, whether it, co it, it corresponds to what you promised to do. Because you wanted to dodge doing an environmental impact assessment, you underdeclared I'll be producing maybe 20 tons. And then when they reach on the ground, they find you. You are an investor in a kind and you dodged the procedure. So that actually that amounts to disqualification of your license or your operational permit. Before taking all the trouble to set up your fish cage pond, it is important to have enough knowledge concerning its care and all the other challenges involved. These, however, are easily manageable. Cage fish farming has challenges, uh, namely uh, they are thieves, of course, because there have not been enough fish in the lake, so if you leave the cages without being uh, secured, then we normally have those attackers, the fishermen, normally come and attack because you are having a lot of fish in a cage, which can actually like a cage of 2.5, you are raising 1.5 tons from that cage, and the uh, fisherman has been in the lake fishing, but he has got only one fish, and you are not there. He will come and attack and take those fish. 
but it has a solution. We have now uh, designed houses which are floating on water and the person will be there guarding. That is the first challenge. The second challenge is uh, uh, sometimes these fish, they, 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 they also fall sick like any other animal. But also we, we, we have a solution. We, we, we treat those fish which are, are having problems of diseases. For example, some of the diseases that normally affect us, there is uh, those fungal infections. Fungal infections, in a local way, we are, uh, sometimes use a uh, 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 salt bath. Eh? Because it is easy to identify which fish is sick within the, in the, lake, in the cage, because you are seeing them. So when you get those ones, we put them under, uh, we put them in water which is have, having some salt and then those wounds heals. Fish has both nutrition and medicinal values and because of this, its market has a wide scope. Cage fish has a bigger market advantage since customers will make orders direct from the fresh waters. Fish prices on the market are however said to have escalated over the years due to scarcity and increased demand. Actually, this fish is now 20,000 here. We are selling it 20,000. But if you go to the markets like uh, in, uh, uh, in the markets outside here, it can be even 30,000. The reason being that we have uh, the, the, the population the population of people who are eating fish is increasing and now the supply which is the lake is remaining the same unit that is how that is why actually we are uh, we are we are uh, persuading more people to go into farming because it is the only way to go so to, we, we can remain having fish and being expensive it is also going to be good for that farmer who is going to venture into that because you will have the market of fish however much they are expensive but it will be helping you also to earn a living from the farming. Uganda still has a huge potential to aquaculture owing to the fact that 18% is covered by water. It is therefore upon Ugandan farmers to follow the proper regulations set up by the government to achieve a sustainable fish supply.